I don't just want you be at my you. normal awkward self. Just be <laughs> Perfect. Okay, cool. I can do so, that. So, yeah, <laughs> 10 years ago, I was quite inspired by uh, something called the Edison Phonograph. 100 years ago, people really wanted to essentially listen to music anywhere. It got me to thinking that technology doesn't necessarily change people's fundamental desires. It changes how they meet those desires. This is what has inspired a lot of this work that you see in the lab. We try to look and understand what people really want and desire. Fundamentally, they just want a desire to interact with other people. A lot of these technologies are really about taking the computer, making it so perceptive, so powerful that it actually disappears, gets out of the way and connects two people together as if they're literally standing there. And we call this concept the magic window. You will have this wall dedicated for essentially virtual teleportation, which is a really fancy display that when I look into it, it looks like I'm looking into someone else's living room, literally. It's not just the fact that you're free to explore what you want. There aren't hurdles to jump over. If you have an idea about what the company should be doing or what our product should be doing or our team should be doing, Steve says, go for it, do it. I have an obsessive personality in general. It waxes and wanes on specific topics. I love coffee, to drink it, but also to make it. And the reason why I love coffee to make it is that it's so hard to make correctly. And I actually love things like that. Coffee has a train of variables. Each one influences the result. Where are the beans from? How long you've roasted? How old it is? How you stored it? Grinding it? How much you've grinded it? How good the grinder is? Does it produce fines? Is it consistent in the granules you pour? And the goal of coffee is to actually control all the variables. Making a perfect cup of espresso is a mixture of art and science. That's how we approach creating new technologies that change the way people live their lives. When I look for people, I look for explorers, and I look for people who feel comfortable in not knowing. But for that to happen, I can't force people to write down a plan. A very Particularly within a group like ours, um, you get the opportunity to work with world-class people who are not from your discipline. We have a um, plastics engineer, we have a material scientist, mechanical engineer, a couple of optical engineers. It's a very wide range of, of expertise that we bring to bear on these multidimensional problems. We want to make things happen that will happen three to five years. So we try to think ahead and do something a little bit crazier. This is an awesome lab space. And not just the space that we have here, but this whole building essentially is world class. We have an amazing amount of equipment. One of the things that has been a hallmark of the team is that we build. That's how we explore. We explore by building. We're builders, we're engineers, we're scientists. This is really all about untangling creativity. The unknown doesn't come by plan. You discover it. How do you create an environment for people to essentially discover because that's what we're supposed to do. And if things get in the way of that, we'll go try to change it.